Yesterday, I was in New York City. Came back late last night. I'm still, I have to unpack my bags. <clears throat> but um, I've been there one time before. New York City is a, is a jungle. It is wild there. Um, whether you're taking the subway to get to where you're going, or like we, I, I was there with a couple other priests um, who had rented an Airbnb, so we were in there, but it, everything's, everything's tight and cramped, you know, like <laughs> this place that we had rent rented. Um, it was like a, as big as the confessional, you know? It's just like everything's small and tight. Walking through the streets, everything's noisy and chaotic. There's a ton of people everywhere, and everybody's got some place to go, and uh, you have to like, assert yourself or you're gonna get run over and trampled. So people do this in different ways. Sometimes it's with a little, you know, like a, a grunt that says, this is my seat and, and don't get too close. Other times it's just the way that, that they carry themselves or what they wear, or, like they're trying to not just get lost in the crowd. And everywhere you go, maybe, maybe New Yorkers don't feel this, but everywhere I went, I felt like I was a stranger because there's, um, like when you're out in the city, you're not at home. So you gotta keep everything with you and you got your backpack and your water and you're wondering like, when will there be another chance to find a bathroom? You, you have to make your way and there's nowhere to rest. And you can see what I read on the faces of people was that um, everybody out here, it's like a grind, you know, and you have to fight to survive. But I was there in New York for a wedding, for my friend's wedding. So um, in college, this college seminary that we go to is at a, a university campus. So the, there's the seminary, there's about 150 seminarians, and then there's like 8,000 regular students on the campus. So um, we were going to our friend Caroline's wedding. Um, she was part of our friend group, she went to the university. I haven't seen her except for yesterday. I don't think I had seen her maybe in like seven or eight years, something like that. So yesterday morning, we, uh, the wedding's at the Cathedral of St. Patrick. In, in New York, and as soon as you walk in the cathedral, as soon as I walked in the cathedral, there's just this huge difference. It's quiet there, and there's peace, and if you look around, you can see other people, like nobody has to assert themselves because everybody else is looking out for each other, helping people find seats, or making sure you know where to go. Me and uh, my, my two brother priests that I was with, we had no idea where we were going. We'd been there like one time before, and somebody was there to guide us. Um, it was it was like being at home there. Being a, being a priest in any Catholic church is like being at home. You know, you walk in, and I just remember walking in like, oh, okay, I can breathe here. It's already restful. I know that there's a, a bathroom that I can find, and somebody somebody to answer my questions. It was, uh, of course, it's a beautiful place, but there was just like an eagerness, anticipation, and joy in the air. So you go in and you have to go, go through the whole cathedral and down into the basement where the sacristy is and there's other priests vesting in there. There are a lot of people there for this wedding. Um, I was there with a couple other priests and there's a, some Dominicans and some Franciscans and if you listen to podcasts, um, uh, there were some, some uh, p priests that you would recognize from podcasts there. But after we got vested, we're getting ready for mass, you know, again, you just feel like, like you're at home, you know, you know what you're doing. So we go to the doors of the cathedral and Cardinal Dolan is there. He's the Cardinal Archbishop of New York. And so he comes through and he just came through the line of priests. And he is so warm and just big personality. But um, he just went through and shook all of our hands and he always gives you a slap on the shoulder. And he just said, I'm so glad that you are here. It's so good that you're here. So you feel very welcome. So um, this isn't a wedding like you normally see. This was the, the final profession for the Sisters of Life, okay, which are like the jewel of the Archdiocese of New York. These sisters that, um, you know, they, they live a religious life, they're, they're professed, they live in community, but their main charism is to protect and enhance the sacredness of human life. And so they do this in a bunch of different ways all, all around the city and around the country. But their most important thing is that they have these houses where women who are in crisis pregnancy or whatever, they don't just come to receive aid, but they come and live with the sisters in these houses. And the sisters, sometimes it's just teaching them basic, basic lessons of motherhood or getting them through their pregnancy. They don't just help them, but they, they say, you're, you're part of our family, come and live with us. At the beginning, there's this long procession of all the sisters, they were all there, about a hundred of them walking up the aisle. And then there's the seven sisters who are gonna make their final profession that day. So they, they've been in the Sisters of Life for, for some years by now, but this is the moment where they make their forever promise. They promise poverty, chastity, and obedience, and to protect the sacredness of human life, 
for the rest of their lives. It's not like for one year or six years or something, it's forever. And so at the beginning, the Cardinal says, let those who will make their final profession come forward. And they come forward and they all say together, Lord, you have called me, I am here. As mass goes on, there are the readings and the homily, and finally we come to the point of the litany of saints where all the seven sisters, they, they, uh, they lay down on the floor of the cathedral and we all pray the litany of saints, asking for, for all of heaven and all of earth to pray for them, to assist them in what is about to happen. But in this, in this laying down, there's just a great reverence for God and for his work. Nobody, nobody was thinking, wow, these sisters are so generous or heroic or something. What they were seeing is the Lord is about to do a wonderful thing. And so we have to prepare ourselves before that. We have to be ready and we have to be attentive. When it finally comes to the moment to, to, to make their vows, to say these words, to make these promises, I'm not gonna tell you what they said because I, I, I don't wanna mess it up, but you can, you can actually see all of this on YouTube. If you go to YouTube after this, if you just type in Sisters of Life, it's like the first thing that comes up, the final profession at St. Patrick's Cathedral. But I was trying to go back to that this morning, so I was just watching some of the video, like what was it that struck me yesterday? What, what was going on? And I still have a hard time putting words to it to tell you what it was that was so wonderful. Um, but this morning, watching it again, I'm just sitting in the rectory, just weeping, watching. So I hope that as you watch it, you can experience some of that also. But before, they're all lined up and they make their vows one by one, so they come forward and they, and they, they, they promise themselves to the Lord. But there's such an eagerness that you can see in the ones who are waiting and listening to their sister make these promises. Uh, like they're just like ready to jump up because they, they want to do it right now and they, they, they have a hard time containing themselves. After those promises, uh, the bishop prays the prayer of consecration where he asks the Lord to send his Holy Spirit to strengthen them and especially to give them perseverance in what the Lord has given them and, and to not run away from the gift that he has poured out. And again, the focus is that God is here and he is doing a wonderful thing, something only God can do. After that, the symbol of their perpetual profession, their lifelong profession, is that they receive a wedding ring. And so the cardinal goes to each of them and he puts the ring on their finger. He says, receive this ring because now you are betrothed to the king of heaven and earth. And he is your spouse. So pray that you will persevere and be faithful to him. It was long. It was like two and a half hours. But at the end, nobody was eager to go. As we started to get ready to process out, there was like some, sort, some sense of disappointment because everybody just wanted to remain there and bask in what the Lord had been pouring out. And at the end, it was really incredible. At the end, you know, you, the sisters process out first and then all the priests and everything. And so these, these seven newly professed sisters, they go to the chapel where the, where the Blessed Sacrament is, where the tabernacle is. And you can see this in the video too, where it's just them in there, just these seven. And, uh, and they're singing the, the last verses of the hymn, but they have their hands raised and they're just thanking God and pouring out their love for him. And like, it's, it's this like crazy thing that you get to see this. You get to see their hearts poured out in this way, enjoying gratitude for what the Lord has done for them. Afterward, there's a reception, of course, it's at a, at a, a church nearby in the basement. And it was, it was unlike anything I could have expected in New York, because you know, there's, there's a hundred sisters of life there and, and priests and religious and everything and all their families and friends. It was, it, was, it was big, but it just felt like a family party. You know, it was so comfortable and at home. You could walk up to anybody, you could meet any table and it didn't, uh, it didn't feel officious or anything like that. After, at the end of that, because uh, Father Louis, Father Sam and I, uh, we wanted to, to take some time in prayer to make a holy hour before the end of the day. So we went up to the church upstairs. We were just in there for a little while. We, we, like I said, we spent about an hour in there. But during that time, um, silently, if you had your eyes closed, you never would have known what was happening. All the sisters from downstairs, as the party wrapped up, they came upstairs and they, they went into church to sit down to pray. And when we left, they were praying. So I have this great picture actually that I snuck just before I left where they had not had their fill yet. They had prayed already that day. They spent two and a half hours in church. What they wanted to do then was to go spend more time with their Lord. So they sat there quietly and peacefully enjoying his presence. So I, I, I don't know, I, I don't think I'm saying it very well. Like the danger of explaining it is to trivialize it and make it sound like so much less than it was. 
I don't know if you can if you can see what I saw or experience what I experienced, and I hope you, you go home and you, you check out the video to get a, a better taste of it. But one danger that can come from this is to kind of trivialize it. I had a conversation with my seatmate on the plane over there. This woman, she was she was not religious. She had like grown up Christian kind of. And I, when I sort of talked about why I was going to New York, um, her response was, wow, that sounds like a really nice thing. That's so cool that they can do that. And I, I, I was like, I, I didn't, I said, yes, it is a nice thing. But what was going on in me is like, this is not a nice thing. The power and glory of the transfiguration of Jesus is what's going to happen tomorrow, what happened yesterday. This is, not, this is not just a trivial thing. At the beginning of Mass, the, the Cardinal, he said, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is not a human-made thing. This is not the, the sum of all this effort for music and preparation and everything. But this is the Lord's work. This is a divine thing that we got to be present for and witness. This is not a trivial thing, just like the transfiguration is not a trivial thing. Another danger in hearing this is that you might even feel a little discouraged. I mean, really, as I was sitting there, I had all of you in my heart because I just thought, man, I just wish that all, all of St. Luke could be there to see this and to experience this, what the Lord is doing right here in, yeah, on earth. But it's, the danger is to say that's really good for those sisters. It's really good for those who are there. And then we kind of leave ourselves out of it. But this is not the point. Okay, the point is that what the Lord did for them, what he revealed that day, is what he wants to do and works to do for each one of us, for each one of you. So like he unveiled his power and did this incredible thing that changed my friend Caroline into Sister and Sister Anne Immaculate of the Cross forever. But he has called you. And so you can say today what those sisters said. You can say, Lord, you have called me here I am. What they promised was only the fulfillment of their baptism. And all of us, all of us are baptized and called in the same way to the Lord. The same power and goodness and beauty and love and joy that was there is for you. You don't have to go to New York to see it because the reason behind all of those things is that Jesus was there, the transfigured Lord who has come. It's, it's not amazing that Jesus is wonderful and beautiful and just pure burning love. But it is wonderful and surprising that he reveals this to us, that he shares it with us, that today he has called you to himself to share his heart overflowing with love, to share it with you, not just with the world, but with you. You don't have to go far to find it. It's mostly hidden, most of the time, when you go to an average parish for, for, for Sunday Mass, it's not, it's not like on the outside, what we saw at the cathedral. But, but you can perceive it. It is there for you to find. It's invisible and imperceptible sometimes to the senses. But the same Lord that revealed his glory then, that revealed his glory on the Mount of Transfiguration, he's the same always. And he is here with us today. He calls you just the same. I want you to reflect a little on the transfiguration. I don't want you to be discouraged because it seems far away or discouraged because what, what I'm describing in New York seems far away or for others. But to know that all of this, all of this is meant for you. I want it to stir up your desire and to clear away the things that just do not matter. We come to church to find Jesus who is our treasure. And he is here for us to be, to, to be found by us. Jesus is our glory. Jesus is all beautiful and good. Jesus is pure love. Sometimes we have trouble finding him, but he is here. He's revealed this to us, and so we believe him because we trust him because he has loved us.